Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crashy, and today we're going to be doing a self VOD review over a match that I played on my alt account. So this was last night in stream. This is my third alt account. It's currently like veteran two, veteran class three, something like that. And that doesn't really matter. What we're talking about today is how to play when you're playing from behind. So this was a really good comeback game. And I want to use this as a VOD review to kind of talk about some of the things that we could have done better in a sense, but also to put an emphasis on explaining what I like to do when playing from behind, um, because it's a really important thing to be able to know how to do. Um, and yeah, so our team comp is pretty bad but we were just doing like viewer games and we were playing some ranked and it, it didn't really matter to me too much so don't overanalyze the team comp too much i am going to be playing like i said charizard jungle or you know charmander jungle whatever you want to say and uh we'll just be watching this but a, a big emphasis again on this gameplay is how i like to shot call and the decisions that i like to make whenever we're not doing so well so i rendered this video out from the stream and we're just going to be yeah watching it and taking a look to see uh, what happens and what kind of tips and, and thoughts that I can bring to the table in terms of teaching what I would like to do to minimize your losses. Now, I've actually said this in the past. So whenever you're behind, you you really need to be careful because you have to remember, I say this all the time as well, a uh, 10-minute game means there's not a lot of opportunity for mistakes. When you make a lot of mistakes, those mistakes stack up against you really, really quickly, and it can be pretty bad. I actually think I might make some pretty bad early mistakes this game. I think I might throw some kills, um, and that's just on me. Like right here, I think I may be over overstay and end up dying or, or something crazy just oh yeah i remember just fighting up against the nine tails early you got to be so so careful in a nine tail snorlax lane so that's all me i mean i i went in to try to help but ultimately i end up throwing what two or three kills there because i stayed in and then my teammates probably tried to help me so pretty big mistake right out of the gate i mean you have to know your limits i do say that every now and then i talk about that too i think it's important to know your character's limits in a good and a bad way i did not really um plan for that fight to go so terribly but it's definitely something to think about when you're playing into like a high burst lucario uh with like the cc and control of a snorlax nine tails lane so gotta be careful there uh lucario's rotating down and i don't really want to lose a fight to him because he is like a full level above me and i think i actually get roamed on here from top lane and i end up dying so he he zoned off the berry really really well i know i'm dead like even if i eject button i'm just big dead so I, I honestly shouldn't even have used it but another death from me this kind of is like a combination of me getting caught up by the lucario but also having the top lane roam which if the top lane on my team could have roamed down it might have been beneficial we maybe could have turned that around so a little bit of awareness from top lane not really there but also again just a, that was a losing situation from the start so i've already started the game off i have two deaths at you know two minutes into the game top lane is getting crushed and this is that game where you look at it and you say okay you know what we're not doing good uh we're we're, we're behind it doesn't look like our bot lane just from looking at the mini map is going super well we do have a machamp bot lane so that's already bad and we are coming up 30 seconds left 25 seconds left until the first big objectives come up so in my mind here i'm already sitting there thinking to myself look i don't think we can fight them we've lost top tower we're not strong enough to group up against them but we need to minimize our losses so in most games the, the typical formula is just group dreadnought do this do that it's always the same thing and right here i forgot that you can't press start and look at the the levels at the same time but i'm trying to look at the levels and i'm looking at it and it just looks like we're you know we're decently behind so to me i'm already telling my team like hey look we need to not be bot lane going down there is just going to get us killed like we're going to end up feeding more kills than we need to so it's just time to farm we're, we are truly already making Making a conscious decision this early in the game to to try to play for late game so bottom is gone dreadnought is gone but we need to trade so if we don't trade here what normally would happen is if we went bot lane here when we were this far behind is they would get dreadnought they would kill us they would push tower so it would be like they got dreadnought anyways that was going to happen they would get a bunch more kills we avoided that from happening they would kill us and take the or th that was part of it they would kill us and take a bunch of experience then they would take the bottom tower then they would rotate top and either do it all over again or get the rotom so compare what could have happened with what did happen so we trade out rotom for top we get it we get a goal down which is huge we didn't give up like three or four deaths which is huge and we actually get an objective like it's it's pretty good so now they're hard pushing and this is could be potentially bad i'm looking to use an, a unite move early on because we we kind of need to and if i can pick this off that's more experience for us so now not only are they not hard snowballing um we're actually kind of coming back a little bit so this is where we encroach a little bit of overextending i don't remember exactly what happens but it's like okay look we did a good thing let's not overdo the good thing right um 
Again, I don't really know what happens here. I peel back for the Snorlax. That's, again, more experience for us. If we can get this kill, great. Um, if not, not great. Uh, but look, they're, sorry, they're already starting to come back. We need to back up. We don't want to fight them. We want to avoid them and try to farm as much as possible. Look at our map right now. Everybody that's watching this video, look at the map. Look how much farm there is. So we are minimizing our losses and trying to stay XP relevant. And that's what I say all the time. So right here, we want to potentially contest this because look at the levels now. Like I know I'm the jungler, but the levels should be starting to tighten in a little bit from both teams. Score wise, we are probably terribly behind, but there's farm, there's a lot of opportunities for us to make a play in the end game. And this is why I do probably need to make a follow-up video talking about Zapdos. I think that Zapdos is a pretty important mechanic to have in the game. Does it, could it be nerfed a little bit? Yeah, I think so. Uh, but at this point, we're pretty strong. We need to potentially get down here and contest. So they're zoning really, really hard. So I think if anything, we're kind of in a bad position because it just, there's not an opportunity for us to get there. We were too slow. I go for the Unite Steel. I don't get it. And unfortunately, this is not going to be the fight and the situation that we're looking for. So I'm going to try to get out, but ultimately I'm going to get taken down. And this is a, a pretty tough situation for our team, but maybe a little bit of trading at very least a little bit of Unite usage coming out from both teams. So you know, really the issue there is that we just didn't group for it fast enough. You have to be on time to objectives. That said, we probably should have just avoided it and traded top again. Um, because again, the same thing happens. We we give up a lot more than we should have. And the experience is going to still, you know, pull in their favor again. Um, points wise, like actual energy points that we've scored, we just don't care about it at all. Like we, we, ha we don't have the luxury of caring about how far ahead they are. Now, looking at top lane, I remember in this game saying like, hey, we have no business being up there. And I mean that. Like our team has zero business being anywhere near Rotom because all they're going to do is die. Boom, that's a death. And again, instead of minimizing our losses, we're actually adding to their lead. So, you know, that's really the sentiment here is that the overall feeling like, look, look at Zero or bot lane doesn't matter. And you know why it doesn't matter that he's scoring? Because we're so far behind, it makes no difference. We need to just farm. That's really the goal. And that's what I'm going to be preaching. If you're behind, just farm. Avoid the enemy team at all costs and farm. So here they're probably just going to completely impose their will and, and they're going to force a fight. And um, there's definitely a thought that I have in my head that I'm trying to save for a little bit later in the video, but and we'll, we'll bring that up. But again, the overall sentiment is like avoid them at all costs, die as little as possible, stay in the game as long as you can, like really survive the game. It's not even about anything other than just surviving the game. Uh, I think we're going to go for dreadnought here so maybe we'll be on time our machamp's a little bit behind so we'll see i don't really remember what happens here uh, but yeah survive the game and make it to late game and you have a chance that's really the overall the overall goal so 242 on the clock I don't really want to use a Unite move here. If we get wiped out here, honestly, it's not even really that big of a deal. Our Machamp's not here, so we can kind of extend a little bit to just see what we can do. Um, but ultimately, there's not really a lot going to go in our favor, I don't think. I don't really remember how this fight plays out. It doesn't actually look too terrible, uh, but I'm going to get taken down. So we'll see. A little bit of trading, and honestly, even with a one-kill trade, like that's still probably better for us. Uh, you know, one, one for two, one for three, whatever the case may be. Uh, it's not great, but still probably decent for us because we need the experience so i don't think they get a dreadnought here but if they do that's unfortunate so they, they go into the end game with a shield on and we only have two goals left because they push really really hard and it's time for us to make a zapdos play now look at the top of the the ui we have four ultimates up exp wise we're definitely down from them but it shouldn't be too too terrible like like i at least i've kept my experience kind of relevant and even with snorlax and bot lane scoring it just doesn't matter because we know that our only win condition is dreadnought or is the zapdos anyways so look i i find zero or a big kill target that i want to focus and get out of the way and now i'm just doing my best to team fight with the team with the snorlax not being here that's so much loss like utility and peel potential and now it's just full 50 50 time like you're going to see me save a fire punch for the, the you know i can't even see the health bar we go in for it we get it so the thought that i was trying to say for earlier is i know like someone in twitch chat or in twitch chat in youtube chat last night was like hey you know that zapdos was kind of lucky the thing is is it, it that's kind of the way the zapdos goes with hard 50 50s when you truly force a 50 50 on zapdos you just try your best to get it but the point was that we did our best to stay in the game to stay relevant enough to even be able to contest that so that one play for zapdos is kind of the cheese of the game right it's like oh my god they were losing the whole game i can't believe they're just winning now but that's what we 
played for. And that's what I played for. I played to stay as experience relevant as possible. I played to make it to the late game as much as possible. We had a couple of bad pushes where honestly, this game could have gone even better for us because we would have been able to avoid some of those deaths. But we farmed the whole time. We were trading out experience in the early game because we knew we needed to. And then we play for the only win condition that exists, which is Zapdos, which is another reason why I actually don't think Zapdos needs to get changed too, too much. Maybe a little bit, but not too much. So at this point, we just need to stop them from scoring at all costs. Uh, they do get a couple of scores in. It's like 28 total, but we should be way ahead. And it just comes down to us winning this last fight and not letting them score like a ton of points. Because if they get a bunch of kills on us, they get a bunch of energy and they score all those points, not going to be a good situation. So we stayed in the game. We stayed experience relevant. We kept ourselves pushing. And that is how you come back from when you're behind. You have to be willing to sacrifice almost everything about the game in order to play really, really appropriately to uh, to try to turn it around. So thank you so much for checking this out. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Um, like I said, big, big swing game, and that's kind of how it goes. But that is the overall sentiment and the message that I want to let you guys know. Just try to avoid a lot of those fights because when they're stomping you, fighting them is just going to get them to stomp you harder. So thank you all so much for checking out the video. As always, be sure to be kind to one another. Tell someone that you love them, and I'll see you on the next video.